this should be a really quick video on just the few things that I do to a mug that's bone dry before I load it into a basic firing. And I think it's worth spending more time um, on mugs at this stage than possibly you might think, uh, just because of how much easier it is to fix any problems now rather than once they've been bisque fired. So, um, I've got the camera set to automatic focus, which hopefully will help with this because it's hard to keep things in focus, but um, let me know if it doesn't work. So, what I want to do is actually, this mug isn't a great demonstration of it, but if I, I trim the rim as I throw them, yeah, this one is a good demonstration. So, if you can see at the bottom of that mug, there are some little bits of clay that would have come off while I trimmed the rim while it's still stuck to the back. I've got other videos about that, I'll try and remember to link them in the description. But there's those little fragments of clay. With pretty much everything at this stage, you can just change the clay at this point. You So those are stuck, only lightly, but they are a bit stuck. If you bisque fire them, they're fused. At this stage, you can just brush them with your finger and they come off. So, I mean, that's fairly obvious and probably something that most people would do anyway but um, yeah just worth I think it was lying in here because it's a sunny day so I've got the door open and um, he's gone out to lie actually in the sun um, yeah that's worth doing anyway but a few other things always check the rim check the handle check the joints of the handle if there are any sticky up bits of clay, and actually there's a little bit there if you can see, on top of the handle, just at some point I've obviously gripped it while I've had clay stuck to my hand, and it's stuck to the handle. And what you can do is just take the thumbnail and knock it off, smooth it over. That's now gone. If you bisque fire that, that's fused, you've got to get sandpaper out, you've got to sand it, then you've got to clean the sanding dust off. At this stage, that's all it takes. Um, another very useful thing is when the ball modelling tools, again video on these, I'll post a link in the description, but um, I use the smallest, uh, use the Zeme ones, the smallest size, um, well the second smallest because I use the bigger end of the two, but oh, this will be a test of the focus, but if you can see that junction there, the, there's a slight crack in the, where the slip meets the handle. It's so not a crack in the handle attachment. Um, the way I attach my handles is I put excess slip on and have it splidge out around the edge and then I let it firm up slightly and use a rubber, um, one of the rubber modeling tools to then smooth it so I get that blend in. Uh, it's a very easy way of joining and fixing handles but the downside is that because you're using wet slip to dry two leather hard pieces of clay. There is a tendency if the pieces are fractionally on the drier side or if I smooth the slip out while it's still fairly liquid, it still wants to shrink that little bit. So the handle joint is perfect, but the slip that forms the, the curve that meets the two of them, that can crack. Again, at this stage, you can just move the slip and it will fuse in the new position. So you can't do much because it's leather hard, uh, sorry, it's bone dry. But what you can do is if you take the modeling tool and just run it across the seam and it takes a little bit of the clay and compresses it into that crack and joins the two sides up with clay. And that's literally all you do. You just get one of these solid modeling tools and run it over the seam and you now have a perfect joint. Um, and if you don't do that, depending on the glaze you're using, it might be visible. With most it will fill it in. Um, it might well not be a problem for you, depending on how you attach your handles. But the important thing is, if you do have a very minor crack, you can fix it at this stage and it's very easy to do and because what you're doing is you're compressing clay into the gap, um, it will bisque fire solid 
and um, it, it's not you're not masking the problem. You've you've filled the gap in with clay, so it's now solid clay. And as I say, this curve is just essentially ornamental. The real joint between the handle and the body is in the middle of the handle where it meets. So it's uh, it's not evidence of a, a cracked handle. You want to be a bit more careful if your handles are looking like they might fall off then that actually could be a risk when someone uses it. Um, so you need to make that decision yourself on a case-by-case -case basis whether or not it's something you're prepared to put out into the world. But um, certainly when it's just an ornamental crack like that, that's a good fix. And then on the same note, um, if you've made drippy slippy pieces, I do and there are any air bubbles in the slip which unfortunately I try and minimize in which you minimize by tapping the syringe on something to get all the air to move to one end and then you can get rid of it before you apply the slip but if you've got thick slip the air bubbles don't want to move if you've mixed the slip up before you start you'll have introduced air into it so there's a reasonable chance you might get one or two air bubbles so you can see there hopefully there and there and that little speck there is an air bubble that's almost well it would have been sealed over um, but as the slips dried it's um, pulled back slightly to reveal it you don't want to leave any of these like this because the glaze can't get into them so if it's a hole where the, nar the opening is narrower than the internal space. There's a very real chance that it'll just trap the air in there. And what you'll get is um, the glaze won't fill it at all and it'll be really quite obvious when it's fired, especially if you're not just glazing in clear like I do. If you're glazing in a colour, the, the colour won't get in there. You'll see the clay through it. It'll be very obvious. What you can do to fix it is just prod it with the ball tool. So you see there, it's now a divot, but it's a, a rounded divot like that. The glaze will fill that, unless it's a very thick glaze, uh, but that's a, another topic entirely. Um, a lot of bubbles are glaze application rather than necessarily off-gassing or any of the other reasons that are given for it. But this would definitely have, um, have been a cause for a glaze issue, and now most glazes, unless they're very thick, will quite comfortably fill that and you won't have the same issue. Same with the ones that are more hidden. You're just looking to make sure there's no overhang and then the glaze will fill it perfectly. So ideally you wouldn't need to do that at all because most of the slip application will not have it if you've done it right but it doesn't always work out that way and again this is a fix that takes a second now and you can't easily rectify once you've fired it. So hopefully that's useful. I'm just working my way through. It means loading the kiln takes a few minutes extra, um, but it also means that fewer pieces fail and there's less cause for remaking work or the facing the dilemma of whether you send out work that's got a minor flaw. A lot of the minor flaws can be avoided by taking your time at this stage, particularly making sure the rim and handle have no sharp bits because at this stage you can just knock them off and if you bisque fire them they can cut you. So uh, very quick fix but I would always recommend at the very least just run your hand around the rim and handle and probably foot as well because again you know, these are the bits that someone will be handling. If you've just made sure that there are no sharp bits at this stage um, the piece should fire fine.